Hello and welcome to the ICOC Global Communications Day. I'm Roger Lamb of Disciples Today and the ICOC Communications Service Team. Please excuse my quarantine look. I, I've achieved Kenny Rogers. Now I'm going for Gandalf. We're so grateful to our regional family chairman who thought it was important enough for us to take some time in our uh, online time together to talk about our global communications and our local communications. You know, communication is really about God, the greatest communicator and the greatest connector. We live in a really unique time, as you know. People are crying out to God around the world because of this pandemic. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, I think God is probably hearing from more of his children than he's heard from in decades right now. And the other good news is that he has chosen many different ways to communicate back to them. And you are a crucial part of that message to the world. God is definitely the greatest communicator. He has taken so many avenues of communication to clearly speak to us. You know, the first major way he spoke to us was through creation. I think God was the original 3D printer, although he didn't need a machine. He just spoke the world into existence. And why did he do that? For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. He wants to show his qualities through the universe. And as we explore it more and more, we understand how magnificent his qualities are. Not only through creation, God has also communicated to us through messengers throughout history. I would say it's the original friends list. You know, Jesus said, therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. And God's been doing that ever since the history of men and women on earth. Besides creation and besides through people, God said, I'm going to write this down and send them a text message. So the original texter was really God. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But God felt like creation and through people and through scripture was not enough. So he said, I'm ultimately going to go down and show them who I am through Jesus. This was the original animation. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and truth. You know, God is not only the greatest communicator, he's also the greatest connector. Being connected to God is expressed in Colossians. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things. Whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Isn't it amazing how God, through his sacrifice of his own son and the shedding of his blood, his death, burial, resurrection, was able to reconnect with us as we experience that death, burial, resurrection in baptism and connection back to God. He also connected us to each other. So this great communicator did everything he could to communicate and then connected us to him. And he also connects us to each other. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. This is what the church is all about. This is why Jesus said, I will build my church is he wanted to move in us through the Holy Spirit and connect us to each other in love and, and have us be 
the body of Christ on earth. That's a high calling and a high connection. A couple of things about that connection. One is that our connection communicates. Jesus said, this is how everyone will recognize you're my disciples. When they see the love you have for each other. You know, that's where I don't think we need to be as worried about all how high tech we are with all of our uh, media things. We need to do the best we possibly can with what we have. But what really shines through is the love of Jesus in our relationships. And we're just trying to find media that will help express that to the world, to our community, to our family and the people around us. So our connection communicates, but also our communication connects. You know, Paul expressed his heart so many times to Christians in the first century. Here's one case. I pray that now at last by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. You know, you think about Paul sitting in a prison and writing these things on papyrus, whatever he had to write on, shipping them by camel, by boat. Months later, maybe they get it. Then they have to copy it down to be able to pass it around. They read it together in different assemblies. Just think what Paul would have done with what communication channels we have today. You know, how would he have used a Wi-Fi? How would he have used a Zoom? Isn't it amazing to think what could have happened? And yet God chose for now for this to be available for his church, his disciples today. The question to me, I'm always trying to answer is how am I using media to connect in my own personal ministry and among other ministries? How am I trying to let Jesus' love shine out through this, this technology? You know, our churches have always really been willing to embrace new technology in order to communicate the, the message a better way. You know, I remember back in uh, the 70s when, uh, yes, I was alive then, and uh, I was a young minister at 29 years old, uh, sitting in a little church office in a little church building in a little town with a little campus in the middle of all these cornfields. And uh, I was looking and trying to figure out how do we grow this church? And I was going to all kinds of conferences and things, but one thing that really struck me was the Crossroads Bulletin coming out of the Crossroads Church in Gainesville, Florida. And I was so excited to see how God was growing that church of people of all ages and, and how their lives were changing and how they were training campus ministers and sending them out. And that's how we found our campus minister. Later, uh, the Boston Church, when it got going, had the Boston Church of Christ Bulletin was the thing to have. Churches all over America and around the world were asking to have this bulletin shipped to them. So much inspiration and information was passed around. Then we established a magazine. Um, when Marcia and I had to get out of the ministry because of her health issues, uh, I was asked to edit our magazine. I said, I would love to do that because I've always written, published, but how do you do a magazine? They said, go figure it out. And God blessed us to figure it out. And so we had uh, Discipleship Magazine, which then became Upside Down Magazine. Then it dawned on us, you know what? Um, videos where everything's going. So why don't we do this on video and send that around the world? So in 1994, Marcia and I and the family moved to Los Angeles to be with the new Los Angeles church and to start KNN, Kingdom News Network. And so we published these videos on VHS in uh, 
five or six languages in every format of VHS and shipped them by FedEx around the world. It was an amazingly complicated system, but so inspiring to see uh, the nation countdown as we were planting churches in more and more places and to see these great stories like the Moscow Church uh, baptizing so many hundreds of people after the Iron Curtain fell. God really used it. And then we did our uh, uh, short films. Uh, I'm so happy and proud of The Cross from Jesus' point of view, short film still available. We also were producing L.A. Story, which was our written record of our history and these miracles God was doing around the world there from 94 to 2003. I never forget uh, in, in 1996, the excitement of, wow, the internet, what can we do with that? And creating our very first ICOC.org website that opened up so many new thoughts and ideas. Also, we have to mention DPI and IPI, who've been printing books since 1988 and continue to print books by disciples for disciples. Uh, be sure and check out their wonderful materials. After our crisis, uh, we had a whole paradigm shift. And the biggest paradigm was there was no funds. Uh, so uh, by faith, we stepped out in 2004 to create a new website because I knew that if we didn't have a way to connect and communicate, we would not be staying together. And so uh, we, we, by faith, stumbled out with Disciples Today 2000, in 2004. And uh, a disciple got his atheist boss to donate the website and the hosting for us for the first three years. God works in mysterious ways. Then, of course, Disciples Today has gone through 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 version, and we're working on 5.0 as we speak. We uh, were so excited in 2008 when Mike Tolliver and Justin Renton uh, got together and said, we need to get back to having more of these videos like KNN and let's do some stories. And so ICOC Hot News was born in 2008. Also in 2008, we did our first foray into social media with dtspace.net. Then in uh, 2008, Jeannie Shaw and Nadine Templer had our first Women Today site. And incredible uh, material. In 2009, a very generous married couple had compassion for our singles and donated so we could start DT Heart and Soul. And it's exciting to see we're coming up on our 100th marriage that we know of. We know there are more out there, so let us know. And 21 babies already from these uh, new marriages. In 2012, we entered Facebook with a bang. We built a Facebook page for Disciples Today, ICOC, ICOC Campus, Singles, Families, and God has just multiplied the impact of those many times. Then in 2019, a very important thing happened. ICOC Hot News morphed into Kidogo. And I'm sure you've seen some of their amazing videos. And they're producing incredible stuff that's still that's connecting us, as you'll see in the video. And we just now, 2020, uh, with Justin Renton, has uh, started the DT Podcast 2020. Great interviews with Tammy Fleming, uh, the Buckholtz is in Milan, uh, Dave Malutnock of Hope Worldwide, uh, the Shapiros talking about mental health in a crisis, and uh, Dr. Mark Aguirre in South Africa on the COVID-19 advice. You know, we've had uh, a lot of great communication through this crisis. I think the reason for that is our relationships that God has connected among us for so many years. Uh, we easily transition to Zoom meetings. We easily have gone to these things. You know, in uh, March, we had a world day of prayer and fasting. Kadogo assembled 35 video prayers from all our regional families. And they're still available for inspiration. Uh, in a week, we spun up a uh, uh, quarantine church con in collaboration with uh, St. Rock Media. 
and Kayla Haley in Denver. In 1338, from 87 countries joined to learn how to use media in this pandemic. Uh, also, we have created two Facebook pages. Sean Wooten started Disciples and Family with COVID-19. And uh, Dylan Mathias in the UK spun up the Disciples and Family Service Frontliners. And there's prayers going on there all the time and current lists being updated uh, of, of people in those situations. We've all seen our communications take a two-year leap forward overnight and who knows where it's going to go from here. It's exciting to know that the Istanbul church in a population of 99% Muslim, 17 disciples had 54 attend Sunday online. Uh, it's exciting to know the Beirut church planted a church in another Middle Eastern country online and are able to help and disciple them. The Philippine churches have had 64 baptisms this year, including three in prison. So many awesome things are happening because of these tools God has given us, but they're because God's the greatest communicator and he's the greatest connector. And let's never forget that. God loves us so he communicates to us. He connects to us and he connects us to each other. And then let's not forget our connection communicates to the world and our communication connects. God bless you. Amen.